Hey, this is Notzer, and this is the Tier 6 Premium Chinese Destroyer Anchan. It has four main guns, six torpedoes, eight AA guns, a surface detection of seven kilometers, top speed, 38 knots, total health, 14,400. For my modules, reduce crit chance on main battery increase, main battery accuracy, reduce the chance of flooded fire, faster rudder shift. For my commander, situation awareness, faster turret traverse, and superintendent, we are on the map, two brothers, and first of all, thank you, Dawn, for gifting this ship to me. The only thing I can really do to prepay it is to make videos on it and share my thoughts, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. We have a couple replays. Yes, a couple. I did not like the way this replay went, and you will see soon enough. You can already tell, quite honestly, enemy Tashkent moves into the area. And we should be detected right now. <laughs> yes, seven kilometers is pretty long. It's like a Soviet destroyer. It's not like a Soviet destroyer. It is a Soviet destroyer. This was a Gnevny class destroyer in World War II. And it was gifted to the Chinese by the Soviet Union. So it's a lot like the Gremyashi. The Gremyashi is a Gnevny class destroyer. This has the ability to load torpedoes that outrange your detectability. You have two torpedo options. Don't know why you would choose the short range torpedo. You're never in a good position to use that. I would highly recommend using the eight kilometer torpedoes. You really don't give up much, maybe a little bit of damage, but you won't take any damage if you send them while invisible. Now we capture A, the Tashkent, he smokes and he moves away. The Tashkent isn't very good, it's too large, the detection is crappy, and it doesn't have torpedo range to make use of them pretty much ever. You have to be right on top of the enemy, and they can do damage to you, they can see you. I feel bad for him having to play the Tashkent, but we all had to do it. And once you get past it, it gets a little bit better. It doesn't get as good as the pre-nerf Kiev, but it gets better. So this enemy York, is headed into the area. Another subpar ship, I would say. It's not the turret traverse, it's the velocity. AP is pretty much not usable at medium to long range because it takes so long to travel. Two seconds longer on average than the HE. We send our torpedoes against the York and we are spotted for probably three or four seconds. He has an idea, probably, that something bad might happen to him. But we also saw that his aircraft passed by before sending the torpedoes. So he shouldn't have a warning unless he's got some spidey sense. It should be tingling really hard right now because he looks like he's going right into a trap. And I'm like, yeah, what? He's able to slow down just enough to avoid taking a torpedo. Now he's in the capture. We could engage from the Alba. Not a good idea to move forward against an enemy force of a York, a Fuso, a Cleveland, and a Tashkent. Considering everyone else around you is a destroyer, we're not going to give up our life so you can stay alive. It's just not happening. The other cruiser on the western flank decides to play the game incorrectly and is staying super far back at the edge of the map. So... He can only engage one target at a time, and he can't get away when they overrun this area. I'm really impressed by this strategy. Now, I could open up on the York. I don't want to, though. Look how many enemies are in front of me. The Fabuki chooses to open up. Interesting choice. <laughs> I think he should have just stayed, and I wanted to send my torpedoes against this York. But the Fabuki was in the way, and whenever there's someone who could possibly run in front of my torpedoes, I just hold on to him. Now you might say, oh that's overly passive, you're missing a lot of opportunities. Well, guess what? I don't want a team kill. The enemy Fuso looks to be headed directly towards the center-ish part of A. I sent my torpedoes accordingly. I felt like they would get to him just as he got in range. Maybe we can make a strike or two. I'm not holding out hope though, this is not looking good. Just look at the way our whole team deployed. It's just gross. A destroyer went through the middle to capture. The eastern side is not on the point, even though it's just two destroyers. Why not one of our destroyers go in, capture D, put pressure on the enemy? 
Now this York, he's showing a lot of his side, so I'm going to engage him with HE. Now, I've been doing some testing. The HE is just as bad, I would say, as the Soviet destroyer line. I would highly recommend any chance you have to fire AP to do so. I could almost get away with firing AP right now. This game is a little bit earlier. I think this was like my second game or third game in the ship. You really want to make use of that AP in a broadside scenario. Pretty much 100% of the time. I don't have the strategy developed at this point. Otherwise, this would be a perfect broadside to fire AP. I would see way more damage than 264 points of damage. It's really bad. We do help get a fire, though. That can work in our favor. These guns have a 7% chance to light the target up by default. And that's, that's Soviet destroyer. That's pretty bad. But if you have demolition, 10%, eh, I still think it's pretty bad. Now, I would like to get in position to send my torpedoes against this York. He is moving around the islands. This is my chance to hold my fire and ambush the enemy. He'll probably see me for half a second, but I'm willing to take that risk in order to get in position to send torpedoes. Now, he misses with his gunfire. Friendly torpedoes might hit him, but he has shown the ability to react pretty quickly. I send him anyway. Let's just try, right? Doesn't look like the game's going very well anyway. We do have two points to the enemy's two points. I just don't like the way my team's playing the game. They're not really controlling objectives correctly. They're dawdling whenever they're trying to eliminate the target. And they just don't put a lot of value in eliminating a low health target as well as they should. Now we see him. Another perfect AP scenario. I actually switched to AP. My torpedoes will not hit the target. Ugh. But we'll see how successful AP is. We are trying to get the waterline. 1k. Okay. We need to move it a little bit back, I think. All right. 1900. That's much better. He doesn't have a lot of health. And I'm just trying to wiggle as much as I can. Also defend the base. But that's kind of a bonus. I did intend to take out this York. I felt like I had the advantage. And he should not be allowed to survive when he's overextending this much. I don't know what my friendlies are doing in the west. We lose a friendly cruiser. And now it's just me and a destroyer hanging on against a massive armada and we take him out with a citadel. Nice, and you saw the accurate gunfire. Great velocity, Soviet destroyer 101. So it's not looking good, of course, right? We're down by a lot of ships. The enemy is pushing our flank heavily. And the eastern flank is not having success to justify the amount that are on the east. Now, I think the friendly just hit with a torpedo. And I'm like, hmm, I could go assist in killing the Tashkent, possibly. Maybe keeping my friendly alive. I also have considered maybe I can use a torpedo against a Cleveland or the Fuso. So that's up in the air. We just got to get as close as we can to assist with our guns. And I have the Fuso selected. It's the slowest ship. It probably is not paying as much attention as it should. So we send it forward of its position with the expectation that it will move into range by the time he is at sea. Now this Cleveland is sort of cutting me off. I did not expect him to go south so hard. But I am trying. At the time, I felt like if I could just fire on this guy, maybe I can distract him enough to want to fire on me. We swap to AP. He's showing a ton of his side. Going for the waterline. We're looking for the Citadel. His guns have not traversed at all towards me, though. Unfortunately, my torpedoes look to be effective. We might be able to land it on the Fuso. Hopefully he doesn't avoid it. Yeah, oh, we got two. Two torpedoes. I'll take that. We're also able to defend a little bit. Although, let's be honest, this game is so over. We're just trying to fight for scraps. And I'm still not doing enough damage to make this guy interested in fighting me. The Tashkent's not in range. 
I'm just hoping. Come on. I'm more than just a mosquito to you. And <laughs> it's really frustrating. This is not what your ship is designed to do. Your ship is really designed to assist in close support to battleships and cruisers. You need to defend them from destroyers. You need to be able to do chip damage at long range, but you cannot be expected to take a full health Cleveland down. And we are in range of the Tashkent. We could switch the Tashkent. I was really expecting that he would go down. And we're gonna try. Ah, uh, we lose the friendly. Ah. We still have AP loaded though. It's not the ideal ammo type against a maneuvering target. Oh, come on. We gotta kill this guy. He's got his smoke going. See, you should have just switched to HE, not sir. You would have had more success. Look at this. This is taking forever. We lose a front turret, of course. Oh, wait, he's gone. No. Come on. Come on. Just take him out. We drop our smoke. We're taking fire. Wow, that took way too long. This Cleveland, though, it's not looking good. Just switch the ammo type whenever you need to. It's a destroyer, has very low cooldown, and we're gonna send our torpedoes forward of his position. Remember, he is turning, he's probably moving ahead. Maybe we can catch him unaware, maybe we catch him focusing too much on killing me, because guess what? We're dead. Come on, torpedoes! Come on! Get him! One, two, yeah! We take him out as our last act for our team. So this game is pretty much over, but as it comes to an end, I'm just going to talk about the ship itself. It has four guns versus five that the Gnemyashi and the Gnevni get. The Gnevni has terrible torpedo range, but the Gnemyashi has torpedo range that's actually useful. And that's sort of what you get with the Anshan. You have the option to use that terrible torpedo range of the Gnevni, or you could use the range torpedo of the Gnemyashi. The Grims outranges you probably by 500 meters, 600 meters, but it's really nice to have torpedoes that outrange your detection, obviously. You also have extra free XP earning capabilities on this ship. So yeah, we earn 400,000 credits, three kills, five torpedo hits on the target. It was, it was satisfactory. 1,333 base XP. We would have destroyed the enemy team if we would have won. We did around 75,000 points of damage, which isn't bad. You really need to use your torpedoes, and thankfully, you can in this Chinese destroyer. Now, we're going to go to a next game, which is going to be a little bit better in all phases of the game, a little bit closer to this video production. I actually had this game just happen probably an hour ago. So I have developed my strategy a little bit more. Same build, same overall goal. Use your guns at range. Wait to use your torpedoes when you're undetected against targets that might be lazily sailing around. So we are on the map hotspot and we spawn in the eastern side of the map. We're going to push the 910 line, take on any comers and see how well we do. Now gun, we're pretty much better than the Japanese. It's really a push against a Soviet destroyer, and we lose out against an American destroyer. As far as torpedoes, we're somewhere in between all of that. Most Soviet destroyers are pretty crappy as far as torpedoes work. I'm detected, so I'm gonna ping out that, hey, there's a destroyer in front of me. He keeps on moving, and he's detected. We unload, and we get 1500, which isn't bad. No module damage, though. I really prefer, oh, Never mind. Okay, we knocked out his propulsion. He's going to use damage control. And we're going to see if we can do it again because he is susceptible to propulsion being knocked out now. Even steering. He doesn't want to fire on me. I don't blame him, but he turns back into me. Friendly should be able to help assist in destroying the destroyer. And we're taking fire from a lot of enemy ships. We're rather small, though. This is good for our team and first shot from a big ship takes out propulsion. I can't wait until I get last stand, so I'm protected from this stuff. And yeah, you could say, why don't you get gun range? I want last stand. I am super aggressive 
I want to find the enemy destroyers. That requires me being close. And usually when you're closer, it's a higher percentage that you're going to take damage. Now, yeah, we get the last shot on the guy. Only 60 damage, but it's plenty for the kill. We got an enemy cruiser, enemy destroyer. I think there's a battleship behind them. I'm not 100% sure. I just know my team is pushing forward. I don't want to run into the mayhem. That would be really bad. I sort of want to go this way, though. You need to let them know I'm going this way. <laughs> it works out. We don't actually collide. I'm going to use my boost to get back to the front of the pack. And maybe we can get in position to do more damage to a cruiser. Maybe the Gnibni. Maybe the Nicholas. You name it. This is a pretty good support ship. It's not very good isolated, though. You need to be very skilled or a little bit too cocky for your own good to run with it by itself. Now, as we move forward, this is five ships. 5v5, 5v6. We don't have a battleship to back us up, though. One of the key points of this, destroyers are designed to take out battleships. So I am kind of looking for a way to get over to the New Mexico and the Colorado. The enemy sort of has moved back from the islands. It kind of looks like I have just enough room to get within torpedo range of the New Mexico, but remain undetected. Also keep in mind, everyone on the enemy team in this area is detected. They get no read whatsoever for how many destroyers there are, how close they could be. The indicator is just always on. So use that to your advantage. This New Mexico does not know I'm getting in position to send my torpedoes, and I send him at and forward of his position. He looked to be headed into range. We did it right at max range, so we weren't detected. And I am considering getting my guns in action just to see if I can hold him steady. Maybe he wants to fire on me broadside. I don't really know, though, what his intentions are. We lose a friendly, which is unfortunate. That's really where the DPS comes from. Destroyers aren't really good at DPS. They do have a ton of alpha, but they can't keep a consistent fire. And this New Mexico is running right into it. We're going to get two, three, three torpedoes. Awesome. And it looks like the friendly finishes off with his torpedoes. So the New Mexico, 100 to 0 in a very short amount of time he was also burning so everything worked out perfectly there's only one more battleship on this flank but he's all the way in the back he's a scaredy cat he's a colorado we can't really get in position without taking on the enemy ships so that's exactly what we're going to do now i want to get my guns pointed to the port side of the ship i want to get in range of possibly the enemy cruiser I'm not going to make this harder than it is. He's the lowest health target. He's taking fire from a lot of friendlies. We should just assist in his destruction. <laughs> but also, there could be a destroyer that's going to come a little bit too close. Be detected. We need to have our guns ready to go on him. Friendly Cleveland is moving forward, and he's engaging the enemy destroyer. Fantastic. If he can, take him out. He should. Oh, did you see it? Destroyer was close. Popped his smoke. He was detected a little bit. I don't believe I was detected. They still don't really know what's going on. They just see a Cleveland and a friendly Nuremberg who's barely alive. Poor guy. <laughs> Gotta be very careful though. This flank could fall any minute if we lose our cruisers. The destroyers are not going to want to engage with their guns. They're going to stay hidden. People are going to move forward and then we could get in a trap. Enemy Miyoko is very low. I don't really have the room to maneuver. I was kind of want to squeeze the friendlies off so I could, although I choose to give them room. They deserve the same room. We're going to fire on the Miyoko though. I felt like friendlies are firing. I should fire too. I swapped to AP because he was showing his side, and of course, he's not showing his side anymore. Now, we're going to announce our presence. Enemy destroyer shows up. We take fire from him. Now that he's shown himself and left the safety of the smoke, oh, he's taken out by something. Wow. Detonated. That's bad luck for him. But 
we are in our smoke. We pop our smoke. We're trying to rotate our guns. They're slow. They're sluggish. But it's not too bad. And we continue firing on the enemy. We had HE loaded. He has great angling, and we actually set him on fire. And I think the fire is going to stick. I was just making sure he wasn't firing on me. He was firing on a friendly mayhem in front of me. But all guns are ready to go, and they're firing. Can we get more damage than 200 per shot? And we haven't done anything yet. Come on! Let's just get him. He's not too far away. We still have half a kilometer to go before he's outside of our range. We gotta get him low. I want him to die to the fire. Or at the very least, I can gun him down with the fire's assistance. I was so worried. Any second now, he's gonna put the fire out and be outside of my range, but... He's going to die to our fire. Fantastic. Do a quick check. Okay, there's a Nicholas. Enemy Colorado. Enemy cruiser behind the island. And friendly torpedoes everywhere. We are scouted, of course. Our smoke is gone. We've held our fire, though, so it should be just as before. Drop back into stealth. Now, our torpedoes are up and available. And I looked at the Colorado and said, hmm, he could go in front of the island. Although, it looks like he doesn't want anything to do with that island. He wants to hide behind it. So, my torpedoes are not going to be as successful as I would like. I'm going to try and get a little bit closer. Now, if I'm detected... So be it. I would like the Colorado to stay in the area. Since we're detected, we're going to try and fire on the Colorado side. I do have HE loaded, but I swap to AP almost immediately because there's so much of the Colorado showing. First salvo doesn't get anything. Second salvo is AP, and we get 1600, which is satisfactory. And this Colorado is moving very slowly out of range. He might actually take my torpedoes, which would be awesome. And we're just trying to get a gauge on where the torpedoes are going. It looks good. I think he's actually slowed down, though. At least one's going to make contact. Maybe two. And we get two. Fantastic. 1,700 points of damage. Causes a flood. He's already on fire. He's taking massive amount of damage. Oh, that's beautiful, beautiful AP. Look how much AP does when you're given a side target. Gotta be careful though, you kinda want to get the mid for that big fat side. And we're able to get 1600, yeah, he actually floods. He dives to our flood. Furutaka is in the area also, and he is not showing a lot of his side. So I am not using the correct ammo type if he remains neutral. But I don't think he's going to remain neutral. I think he's going to show a lot of his side. So I keep AP loaded. And that's exactly what he does. He shows a ton of his side. And we're looking for that waterline shot. It's ricocheting off, though. He is still angled rather well against us. He's firing on a friendly. Please, friendly, survive. Remember, that was a low health target. I would love to keep him in the fight. He's doing a lot of damage to this enemy cruiser. And I would love to take his gun out, too, in the front. Is he going to burn down? Yes, he died. The Nicholas is in range, though. This is not good. I don't want anything to do with a U.S. destroyer at five kilometers. I turn aggressively. I have to get all my guns in this match. I will not survive if I don't. Takes out our engine. We have to use damage control. We don't have last stand. He's on fire. Come on. Come on. We're ahead by about... A thousand, two thousand hit points. And oh no, I'm gonna run aground. I had to turn sharply. I can't afford to run into the island. If we get him down again, we knock out his propulsion, but he disappears. He uses a smoke. Oh, come on. Our engine's down too. This isn't good. I pop my smoke because there's an enemy cruiser right behind me. I'm dead in the water. I can't afford being seen. And 100% this Pensacola wants to fire me. Yeah, he's blind firing. He's not going to get anywhere near me. I'm never going to let you. I'm spamming damage control. Come on, get the engine back up. Let's move forward. I was hoping that I would give myself enough distance to avoid the Pensacola's detection, chase the Nicholas into a scenario where it's my advantage, but he shows back up. We have to take him down. Look how low he is, and we fire everything. We only get one, though. We're detected. Pensacola's going to fire 100%. We're also detected. 
with that aircraft overhead. And I felt him looking at me. And yep, sure enough, here come the rounds. Can we avoid it? Oh, are you kidding me? He knocks out my propulsion again. Damage control is almost up though. We've got to get this going. Oh, this just sucks. I felt like I could take all of them on, man. But it's just not working. And the Nicholas is greedy. He shows himself. That will be your downfall, my friend. So we fire as quickly as we can. We're trying to avoid incoming damage. And yeah, we take him out. Shouldn't be so greedy, Mr. Nicholas. He takes out one of our... Oh, are you kidding me? Another super low health target. I'm trying. Oh, that was bad. That was a big shot. And of course, propulsion's knocked out again. We've only got the one gun in the back. I can't afford to show more than that. We land one. Can we land another? Come on. No. Did we get him? No. It hit the water. I just saw it. He was able to avoid it. We would have killed him if we would have had that other gun. 100%. Can't believe how close that was. And I also can't believe how often my propulsion got knocked out. You know, maybe I should use the propulsion module just until I get last stand because that's ridiculous. It went out like six times in the span of five minutes. Just annoying. Now we have an advantage. It's four to four, but we have a huge point total lead and we get another kill, good. The Western side of the map has done a great job, but why are they not being more aggressive? This friendly Milko should be pretty safe. Go to the Pensacola, take him out. I don't know why you would pull back when you see a Pensacola that low. He could go back and get backup. You don't wanna fight all three of the enemy ships at one time. Take advantage of it. When he's isolated like this, when he's close enough that you can fire on his position, don't hold back. You never know if this will be the only opportunity to take him out. So the guys on the far west side will take the rest of the match to get in range to engage any target that could be defending their base. Hopefully, the friendly cruiser will be ready to engage a destroyer and take him out. The destroyer is so low, one random shot should be enough to take him out. Don't really need a lot of skill there. Hmm, so both of the Pensacolas were around the same area. That is interesting. This one has around 6,800 hit points, while the other one had 2,800. So the total health pull on the enemy team is somewhere in the realm of 10,000 points. And Heavy Gears has more than that entire total. He runs aground ever so slightly. And it actually helps him avoid a large salvo by the enemy Pensacola. He's just using his front guns though. I don't know, and look at this, yeah. He compensates and he moves off and avoids another salvo. I'm sure that Pensacola just hates him. Oh, oh, the enemy destroyer. Come on, get your guns ready, get your guns ready. Just fire on him. You don't need much. You already got three guns in position. Just track him and take him down. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Shouldn't be hard. Good. Okay, he takes him out. But he should expect two enemy Pensacolas right here. He has the advantage of his aircraft, so there shouldn't be any surprise whatsoever with this play. He should possibly load a P, but he should definitely not show his side because that's the only way a low health target can bring back a disadvantage. So he's showing a lot of his side and look at how many enemies are right here. Here comes one. Okay, that was AP, not bad. The other one is probably firing. He should be able to take him out here. He takes him out, oh man, that was a good shot from the enemy Pensacola. Front Pensacola is taken out. The friendly Miyoko is also destroyed. And this last Pensacola can decide to run away forever and not engage the friendlies or stand and fight. Spoiler alert, he's going to run away. So we're going to speed up to the next engagement moment. This game was really fun, though, for me. The ship was capable with both the torpedoes and the gun systems, accurate range, plus having the ability to send torpedoes outside of your detection is a huge plus for any destroyer. 
Now the Pensacola showed back up, and he was taken out by a friendly who fired at long range. Good shot, whoever did that. But yeah, this game, really fun to play. We got four kills, first blood, five torpedo strikes on the enemy, 1,619 base XP. We did around 75,000 points of damage. So it was just a solid game, really fun to play. Hope you enjoyed watching both of these games. Hopefully you learned something. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll catch you next time.